New studio, new look, new gear, same old Andy. Prepare to get gas because it's time for the week in gear. This week, a guitar from Court costs more than a guitar from PRS. And Brian May is pictured at the Gibson Garage in London, sending the guitar rumor mill absolutely spiring. Weird, but seriously, a Gibson made high end red special? Brian, if you're watching, call me as there are plenty more guitar builders you should consider before signing up with the big G. And yes, I know it's none of my business. It's a few weeks after NAMM and I still have so many videos to upload from the show. And in fact, to be honest, I'm a little gassed out. So I hope this week's twig will ease me back in gently and I can see what gear I missed out on while recovering from all the other gear. Anyway, this show is brought to you by Guitar Auctions at Gardner Holgate. More about them in a little bit. Okay, let's kick off this week's most exciting gear releases with a super solution to your studio speaker woes. IK Multimedia have been nailing it with releases recently. Tonex has brought modeling to the masses, but this week they released the ARC Studio. Is it ARC or ARC? Anyway, the ARC ARC Studio. The advanced room correction system takes measurements of the sound in your room and then applies those measurements to make your speakers give a more accurate representation of what your music actually sounds like. In addition to that, it also has virtual monitoring so you can hear what your music would sound like through various different setups, including those white speakers and a mobile phone. Yuck. But Andy, surely this is a tool for mixing. How does that apply to guitar? Oh, I'm so glad you asked. But why aren't you subscribed to the channel yet? If you use any kind of modeler or plugins and you're making your own presets, the chances are that you're not really hearing what your preset really sounds like. And if your presets sound great at home, but terrible on stage, the Arc Studio could be the solution. Get the little box now. I am so convinced by this that I made a video about it and I will link to that at the end of this video. The Arc Studio costs around 299 bucks depending on where you are in the world and it can operate without being linked to a computer but there's also a software only plugin which is a little cheaper and I highly recommend that you try out the free trial and yes I will put a link to that trial in the video description. At number four this week, Chase Bliss update a pedal from 2018 with their Condor Hi-Fi. Now, here's a confession. I have never played a Chase Bliss pedal. I know. So, what's the big deal with the Condor Hi-Fi? It's basically a tone shaping overdrive pedal with an EQ and gain boosting. Now, it does sound a little unchase blissy and a little boring, but I realized that it actually has all the knobs necessary to recreate other famous overdrives. And I would love to test that out. So if you want to have several drives on your board, but only one pedal, this could be the pedal for you. Now, as I mentioned, this is an update on the original Condor. So what's different? The new Condor Hi-Fi has a new cleaner op amp. I love saying op amp and the same power supply as the Chase Bliss preamp, which results in more headroom and more dynamic range. Even more good news, if you're an owner of the original Condor, Chase Bliss will update your pedal to the new version for only $49, including return shipping. And that's pretty special. The Condor Hi-Fi also has presets and MIDI control and CV control and expression control and control control and true or buffered bypass and it will set you back $399 but there will be only 1,000 pedals made and 1,000 boards for the updates to the version 1. So if you fancy one, time is ticking. Now if you're a Chase Bliss fan then this is probably already on your list and you may have already pre-ordered but if like me you have not yet entered the Chase Bliss world this may not be their most exciting pedal to start with but it certainly looks like the most sensible addition to your pedal board and actually something that I would use. Before we get to number three on the list, it's now time to talk about this week's sponsor, Guitar Auctions at Gardner Holgate. 
Gardner Holgate have hundreds of guitars, amps and pedals available in their four day auction starting on the 5th of March. And I've picked some of my favorites to share with you in this sponsor slot. If you're looking for something Fender, you're in luck because there are so many at this auction and there are starting bids of like 260 pounds. But my pick of this Fender lot is this 2009 Custom Shop 57 Strat. It's relict, it's blue, and it's starting at 1,200 pounds. That is a dangerous price for someone who's just window shopping. They've also got guitars that are owned by celebrity musicians, maybe heroes of yours. And my pick of those this week is this acoustic, which was played on stage by James Dean Bradfield of the Manic Street Preachers. That's got a starting bid of 800 pounds. Nothing. On day two of the auction, they have amps and choosing something here is super difficult. But as a Nirvana fan, there's a 1980s Mesa Boogie Studio 22 amp going for between 400 and 600 pound as a starting estimate. And this is really just the tip of the iceberg. So have a look at the catalog at guitar-auctions.co.uk to see all the things they've got up this month. And if you want to see them in action, you can check out the Guitar Auctions YouTube channel in the link in the video description. Go on, off you go. I'm looking at the catalog for next week. Ooh. By the way, if you're enjoying this weekly show, don't forget to subscribe and leave a thumbs up, double thumb, so more people can see it in the future. Thank you. Third on the list is a guitar from Court that for Court comes with big specs and a high price tag to match. Okay, so specs first. The X700 Triality has a Swamp Ash body and a fantastic name and a 25 and a half inch bolt on five piece roasted maple and walnut neck, a 400 millimeter radius, which is 15 and a half inches, I think, correct me in the comments, a roasted maple neck with 24 stainless steel frets, so two full octaves. As for the electrics, there are Three Fishman Fluence pickups, one volume, one tone, and a five-way toggle switch. The hardware features Court branded staggered locking tuners and a Court CFA3 Trevelo system, which Court is really sort of pushing at us, so it must be good. I don't know. Let me know once again. So yes, it is highly specced compared to other Court guitars I've seen. Not that they've been bad, but this one is another level. Ooh, boy band. Uh, I think it's pretty stunning as well. It's available in open pour vintage burst and open pour black burst. And I've got to say, this looks like a hell of a guitar. The truss rod adjustment is at the heel, the correct and only place to put it. The high fret access puts this guitar firmly in the serious player section. And being caught, you're probably saving quite a few bucks by not having a big brand named on the headstock. Speaking of price, I saw it advertised for around 1200 bucks. What was that in euros? Regardless, that, that's, I say bucks, I mean a general universal price, except for in Australia, because everything's more expensive there. Good day, mate. Uh, and it also comes with a gig bag. Now, that is a lot of money for a brand that in my head only make affordable guitars. But the specs don't lie. And if these guitars, what was it? The Triality, X700 Triality, if they play and sound as good as they do on paper, then this could be a very good, sensible instrument. Regarding the look, there's a very slightly dated Ibanez look about it, which is not a surprise because Court also make guitars for Fender, Squire, Schecter, and you guessed it, Ibanez, to name but a few. The thing is, the Ibanez guitars still have that desirability factor because of the name on the headstock. And I know this is snobbish, but I've not yet heard someone say, oh man, I can't wait to save enough money so I can go and buy that court. That's not how I feel. It's just something I can imagine someone not saying. Put those words in the correct order. I can imagine saying someone not something I can. Anyway, times are changing and I for one welcome the idea of a guitar that could be half or two thirds the price of its competitors? What do you think? At number two this week, Vox are releasing an extremely limited edition line of amps called the AC Classic Vintage Red. And it was Vox that said they're extremely limited. I don't know how many they're making. 
could be one, could be 10, could be 10,000, you know? FOMO. Anyway, I've chosen these amps for no reason other than I think they look cool. In this series is an AC10C1, which is the 10 watt combo with two EL with two EL84s and <laughs> in this series, I've got to get through this. This is hard talking about specs. There's all these things going on. In this series is the AC10C1 in stunning red, the 10 watt version combo. It's got two EL84s and two 12 AX7s and a 10 inch Celestian BX10 speaker. The AC15 has two EL84s and three 12 AX7s in the preamp section. And that comes with a 12 inch Celestian Greenback G12M. Mmm, mm, M stands for mmm. And finally, the Big Daddy AC30 Custom CVR has four, one, two, three, four EL84s and three, four, one, two, three. 12 AX7s. And that comes with two 12 inch Celestian Greenback G12 mmms for that back breaking, authentic AC30 tone. So, the amps themselves are no different at all from the standard models, but these are covered in beautiful bright red with a black rectangular logo badge. And you know, Vox do special colors every now and again. And this year it's red and black, which are my colors. My favorite of the bunch has got to be the AC15. It's enough for a gig. It's not too much for home use and all the controls you could need without the weight and size of the 30. I would skip the 10, I would get the 15, but I'd be thinking about the 30. Andy's pick of the week. My pick of the week is an unbelievably priced PRS. In a world, sorry. <clears throat> In a world where we're told that prices are rising globally, PRS have given us the SECE24 standard satin $499. Now I had to look twice at the price because I usually associate PRS guitars with being on the more uh, blues lawyer end of the price scale. So at under 500 bucks, just this thing has to be bad, right? Well, it doesn't seem to be. Spec wise, it features a mahogany body with a wide, thin bolt on maple neck. 10 inch radius rosewood fingerboard with 24 nickel frets and a 25 inch scale length. Sounds good. Um, the, the pickups are PRS 8515S humbuckers and it comes with a gig bag. Now the most important part for some of us, there are three colors available. Vintage cherry, turquoise, which is my favorite, and charcoal, which I could probably leave in the case. And of course, it's got a satin finish, which PRS say allows the wood to breathe more, but also it's cheaper to make. Cheeky Paul, cheeky Paul. Did that again because of the chair noise. It's got a, it's got master tone, a master volume, and a push pull for splitting those coils on the tone knob. And all in all, it seems like a pretty decent guitar. And if the craftsmanship is good, this could just be one of the best guitars at just under. 500 bucks. Now, for me, this is exactly what Epiphone should be doing. This is directly competing with Squire and Harley Benton and companies like that. But instead of giving us quirky, weird things that Squire give us, PRS are giving us an absolute workhorse and a gateway drug to their guitars that require a doctorate in dentistry to afford. There is one thing though, the bolt on neck heel looks weird and oval. And I think that's new, right? I think that's a step backwards in term of playability. But, um, you know, each to their own. I don't know why PRS have done that if it is new. If you know, again, let me know in the comments section. Either way, I will be trying one of these out very soon as I have got to have a go on a super affordable PRS. And I've been gassing for something PRS. I've never actually owned a PRS. And recently my friend Steve bought a PRS that was on offer at Toman. And it was the exact guitar that I was considering. And then he bought it and said, look what I've got. And I'm just wondering if these new satin finishes will, you know, scratch my itch. If anyone gets one of these, please let me know what they're like. I am very curious.
Thank you to the wonderful people who support this show on Patreon. Their names are on screen right now. And also to the lovely fellow geeks showing their support right here on YouTube. Their names are on screen now and they got there by clicking the join button. Wink, wink, nod, nod, say no more. That's a lie. I am going to say more because if you want your name up in lights on your very own screen on my video, then click that join button right down there on YouTube or visit my Patreon link in the video description. And here's a special thanks to the top tier members. Sarang Narayan, PQ, Deads, Dustin Bonnet. <coughs> 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 Josh Tamberg, Chris, Huff, Doug Paget, Alenta Boston, Boom Shakalaka, Dirk. This prank is officially sponsored by Jason Welch, Buzzle, Michael Lerner, Buddha Blue, and um, the other guy, Hugh G. Rection. Thank you to all my top tier members. You really make my hair curl. Go ahead and click there to subscribe. Comment your pick of the week down below, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye!